All right, so I'm going to be showing how to kind of get this HP Omen uh, 25L gaming desktop PC or GT15-0324 desktop apart. All right, there are a few tricky bits in there. I already took out the motherboard and other stuff here. Um, so if you want to get the back plate off, which you're going to have to if you're putting a different motherboard because the power button connector is all the way up here and usually on motherboards it's going to be down here. So what you need to do, there's a screw that's all the way down there. And then once you remove that screw, the back or side panel here, you can actually slide it over just like a normal desktop PC. The other one, you have this button, which obviously you push that and it drops the front panel forward. And then you can pull it up and take it out. All right. Um, I'm not going to be showing everything, but I figured kind of showing where some stuff is hidden will help people. Um, and the power button, they actually... As you can see, it's super long. They just um, coiled it all together to make it really short. So you can easily move it down here. You just have to cut these uh, zip ties, okay? Mm. Um, and then the other connector. So the case actually will, um, it looks like it will support a standard um, motherboard. The only other thing is the front panel. So I removed the front panel. It has this little connector, which um, most motherboards aren't gonna have that kind of thing. Um, it came from this connector here and yeah, a standard like off the shelf motherboard isn't going to have that. So, um, if you want to know how to remove this front piece that I took off that had the omen thing, there's a screw that's on the bottom. You'd have to like turn it over and there's a screw on the bottom of there that holds the bottom of the plastic front plate in place. Okay. And yeah, and to remove that, you basically just get in and you just pull the panel off. It has little clips and it will come out. Um, so you can see, let me show you here. So these are the little clips. They're just in the side here, just like that. So yeah, um, you can just yank that off. If you're wondering how I got this top plate off, all right? So the top plate, you have the, um, all these ports here, okay? So this piece with all the ports here, it actually jams up into there. And the top plate <coughs> has these little pegs that stick out. You see these little pegs? And those go into like these holes here. So in order to slide this plate off, you have to actually remove or pull this thing out first. And to do that, you have to remove, there's three screws. So there's two screws, one here and one here. And then there's one screw on the front here. Once you get that out, these metal pieces um, here actually um, have the plastic resting on it. So if you can see where my finger is going right there, this thing catches it. So you have to actually pull this back slightly and kind of push this metal forward so that way it can drop off from this, all right? So you're basically kind of tilting it this way. You can see it has this thing here that kind of sticks out and it rests on this. It rests on that piece there. It's not gonna focus, but it rests on there and that's what holds it up in place. So you basically have to pull this outward slightly as you kind of pull it down. And then once you get all of that out, um, this piece, uh, you can see how it has these little hooks here. It slides forward this way. Once you slide it that way, you can pull this whole thing up. Also, on the bottom here, it had this little metal thing, which I don't think I needed to remove this, but it has this little bracket. I'm not sure what it's for, but it has these two feet that hook down in there, and then it just swings up, and then there's two screws, one on this side and one on this side. Once you take those screws out, you can pull it slightly forward, and then you can slide it out of there. All right, so that's pretty much what's in there. I'm gonna assemble it with the other motherboard just to see if everything fits and works okay. And then I'll show you it um, somewhat reassembled. I'll see if I can put some of the pieces back on camera, but I only have one hand. I don't have my tripod here with me to show this. So hopefully my description of how it's all held together helps. All right, so I'll see you guys once I got this reassembled. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention when taking the motherboard out, these, um, posts have little raised lips so you kind of have to pull the motherboard up slightly to raise the screw hole up past that before you can actually pull it out all right also we're gonna have to replace this piece um, because we have a new motherboard with new ports so you got to go from this side and just push it in and you can shove that out all right so we're gonna put the new one in the new one basically just goes in there and pushes up into there and you can see the side has these little dimples on it that help hold it into place all right so we're gonna get more of this together and see you guys in a bit Okay, so this metal plate, um, it was easiest to put in by kind of resting it up this way. And then you get this top piece in first, and then you work on like pushing these bottom corners, then you can kind of work in towards the center. 
but there you go we got that metal plate in some other boards don't have this metal plate and it's just one solid piece so if you don't have that then just put it in but you don't want these ports just open like with holes like how it is like here okay all right as you can see we got a normal size atx board in here um, the one bad thing, there's no cutout behind this, so make sure that you install the CPU cooler beforehand um, because for this kind with the AMD, um, it has the little latch system. If you get a cooler like that, then putting this plate on is fine or using the stock, um, but some, like the HP one, it has a mounting plate that you need to put behind that's different. This original HP Omen one is different because you can see this is a square. On this one, you can see it's rectangular, like it's much longer this way and then it's shorter this way. So you want to make sure if you're going to put a cooler, you're going to have to put it either before you install the motherboard or you have to have one that uses this mounting system. A lot of the coolers, aftermarket ones, you need to replace the back plate because it doesn't use the original screw mounting mechanism. So keep that in mind. That's very important, right? Sometimes it might use the metal back plate on the back, but you'll have to remove this. Um, if that's the case, uh, you'll want to be careful taking this off because it might, when you take all four screws off, that metal plate might fall inside and then drop underneath. So you might have to lift the motherboard up to hold that metal plate up before you screw on whatever top mounting bracket is there. All right, anyways, we're going to have to move the power button that used to plug up here because it goes down here now. All right, I think it's on one of these pins. So we'll get that all set up and then I'll show you again. All right, we got the CPU and everything set up. Um, and then this is kind of okay. It's in the right spot. The fan here, um, I don't think there's extra slack here. So this fan, the connector is very short. We'll see if we rotate it, if putting it here will allow me to plug it over here. Um, but yeah, other than that, we're gonna continue with this and I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so this motherboard is kind of stupid and this fan is kind of stupid. So this cable is so short, it just barely reaches. It doesn't, I mean, it just barely doesn't reach. So we would need an extension cable um, if you want to use the same fan. Uh, there's other connectors here, but this is for the CPU and chassis, other chassis fan. So yeah, normally they'll have one like all the way up in the back closer up here. I don't know, they put this one towards the center of the motherboard, which is really dumb because it's really bad for, like, cable management. Like, why would you want a wire hanging out in the middle of your board? So, this fan, if you're reusing the fan in case, make sure you get a motherboard that has a connector all the way up there, or you get an extension. They do sell extensions for this 4-pin fan connector. Alright, so HP put the audio connector all the way up here, so... There's extra slack um, there that we need to cut and then we need to actually move it because it plugs in down here. All right, so I'm gonna do that and yeah. All right, um, the cable is clipped in so you do need to pull this clip up to get this out. I can't do it with, oh yeah, I can't do it with one hand. Okay, so you do need to pull that out um, to be able to move that down to plug in at the bottom of the motherboard here. All right, I don't know if we'll have to clip this, we'll find out. All right, I was able to plug it in down there, um, but it is pulling on this. So I am gonna put the top stuff back first just to make sure everything fits. So again, we have this plastic piece first that we need to drop in. So it starts slid over slightly to the front more, okay? And then it drops in and then you can slide it over. Once you slide it, um, you'll see this is now flush with the front and the back, okay? That's what you want. Then when we go to put this in, it's gonna hold those little pegs in place. So let me show you that, give me a second. All right, so here's the um, thing here. I actually found it's easiest to have it upside down. So this is actually the top of the computer now on the ground. And we're gonna line up these little holes. You see these white pegs here? So you're gonna line that up and then click that down. So you push it down and now you can see those um, protruding parts I was talking about earlier. Let me see if I can somehow get that to focus. I don't know. Okay, so you can see the it's it's not gonna focus I don't think but um yeah let me try from further back okay you can see the protruding metal piece um, right there going over that extended part all right so let's go ahead now and reconnect put all the screws back in all right so again there is one on the front here that we got to put in first all right so that one looks like this it's like a longer one and small give me a second 
All right, so I already started it. We're just gonna screw it in all the way. And I like to turn the screw backwards so that it drops into place. You'll know you did it right because when you go to screw it in, it should go in pretty easily. All right, we're gonna get the other two here now. Um, I can't do this with one hand, so give me a second. All right, so I got the screws in. I didn't tighten them all the way down, but basically tighten those two screws in. All right, I don't think I had to actually remove this um, um, audio port, USB port thing to replace the motherboard. So unless you need to replace those ports for some reason, um, I don't think you need to take these two screws out or this top white plate, All right? So yeah, you can skip that step, but if for some reason you wanted to take it, to take it out, that's how you do it, all right? All right, so here you can see the eight pin CPU connector works just fine here. Usually most cases will have these clips, sorry, these clips at the top, but um, HP, I guess, had it upside down and this motherboard has it sideways. So we're gonna plug those in. So just get those eight, the two four pin things back in and then push it down, All right? I guess I only can do one at a time. It's kind of being annoying. Oops, sorry, I'm going out of view. I hate these kind of connectors. They need a clip that holds all eight pins together. All right, so there we go. And then, yeah, if you want, you can pull more of this slack back out from the other side. All right, um, we don't really need this cable. This cable HP used because on the old one, they actually had this plugging in down here and then it routed around to go up here. So this is actually kind of an extension and it's not gonna be used. All right, I was trying to see if I could repurpose this RGB cable that we're no longer using here um, for the fan connector. The, I mean, this connector fits on it, but the problem is the pins on this are too short, sadly, so we weren't able to use it anyways. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and continue getting the rest together. All right, sadly, this um, this is a USB 3 ports uh, connector for the front or top panel here. Um, this is also too short. The connector's right here, so the USB ports on the top of the computer will no longer work. Um, but there's probably an extension that you can get for this as well, and then you can extend that over. So if you really wanted to, you can add that as well. All right, and let's go ahead and take a look at the other stuff. We have the SATA connector here. I'm sure that will fit. We have all these SATA ports here, uh, and this cable is plenty long, so that's fine. We plugged in the motherboard cable, and yeah. Um, the power button cable also, I pushed in through there. We're gonna have to see and route it to here. Apparently this chassis fan connector is also too short. Um, this fan, this motherboard doesn't have any fan connectors anywhere. There's only, I think, this one here, the CPU chassis fan, and then this other chassis fan. So not enough fan ports for this. Um, we'll probably have to get two extensions or get some adapter that converts SATA connectors or something to plug those in. All right. All right, so the GPU uh, aligns with this port differently, so we actually have to take this one metal plate out and move that up one slot. Okay, so this one actually has to go up here now. And yeah, I need two hands for this, so I'll be back. All right, so we move that down. Now we got the GPU in here, and you can see it lines up. We're just gonna have to push that in. Okay, make sure that this little clip goes back up all the way over the tail and then we'll put these two screws back in. All right, so we got the screws back in and we plugged in the power cable for there. Again, we're gonna need some connectors for the fans because this doesn't have fan connectors there. Um, also, the power cable, you can see there's the power LED on the first two, then the power button on the second two pins. Hard drive LED, we're only using the power button, so we just gotta get into these two pins at the top here, all right? All right, so this metal plate, we have to get back up here. There's the two screw mounts there and there. So you just line this up here. Okay, at the bottom it has those two metal feet that stick out. So we gotta line that back up to go into that slot, those two slots there. And then you swing that up and then we gotta get those two screws in, all right? Let me do that. All right, so we got those two screws in. Let's go ahead and get the front and side panels on. Again, the front panel, um, the motherboard doesn't use this RGB thing, so we have no way to plug this in. So we're just gonna actually leave this hidden, tucked in here. All right, so I just tucked the cable in like that. Now we're gonna get in the front, okay? We're just gonna snap it on. Okay, so the front panel has these hooks here that go up, 
and it goes up into those. So we gotta line this up first, okay? Get that up hooked in there. All right, it's hard to do this with one hand, but once you get that hooked in, okay, let's see, I gotta hold it with my feet. So hold that, and then you can snap this all into place. All right, now that we got all that snapped into place, sorry, got lots of screaming going on. Then we're gonna get this screw at the bottom back in. It's hard to do this with one hand, but okay. I like to twist it backwards first to hear it click into place, and then we'll just tighten that down, and hopefully, there we go. All right, so we got that. Now we just need the other side back panel. Oh yeah, of course, don't forget the power button here. So um, I'm gonna cut the two um, twist ties or zip ties off, sorry. And then we're gonna extend the cable over to plug it in. All right, so we undid the power button cable. You can see it extends here. And then we had it go through the same spot that we did um, the other front panel thing for the audio. All right, those audio thing, actually, it's not too important. It's only if you use the headphone and microphone jack here. Um, but if you don't use that, I mean, you could always just use the ones on the back here. So these aren't important. All right, sadly, these USB ports won't work unless we get an extension. And I'll go over what we need to extend. All right, so here you can see how we have it plugged in using the two on the right. Um, it doesn't matter which side is positive or negative. I found the power buttons don't care because basically when you push the button It just shorts the two connectors together and lets it jump across All right, so yeah now let's go ahead and get the back panel on again The two things or three things you'll need the fan might need an extension for that the front and the back the front one and the back one and then you'll need an extension for the USB 3 as well if you want to have those top USB 3 ports Okay, now let's go ahead and get the other back side panel on. Hopefully it will fit okay with all the wires hanging out the other side. Okay, since now you have these extra wires here. Um, but yeah, all right, let me get the panel and we'll see. Okay, so here's the panel. You can see that little hole. That's the screw hole and it lines up with the bottom here. There's that little hole there. Okay, so basically this will go on top. Okay, and let me see. Give me. All right, and it starts further back further towards the back and then slides toward the front. So I'm gonna need two hands to do this, but basically you push this all down and then slide it over. All right, one other last final touch. I routed the wire under here, SATA cable, the power button cable, I route them all under here. So it has a little bit less like bulk there and I cut that zip tie. All right, so I'm gonna get this on. Oh, one other thing, this side has doesn't have the sliding, it has hooks. So you actually have to start it slightly up and then slide that on. Then once you get that hooked on, um, then you gotta find where this hooks in and then slide it over. Okay, just so you can see, this is about how much gap you would have before um, so it can slide in and then you can slide that over. All right, once you got it all slid over and lined up, we're gonna put the screw back. All right, and here you can see where the screw goes. It's very far back at the bottom and just tighten that in and that will keep the panel from sliding back out and falling out. All right. And all that's left now is the front, or this side panel. Again, the cooler will have to be done later, um, but basically you just get a standard clip on uh, the AMD type, and that should be easy to do. And then the extensions for the two fans and the USB 3, if you want everything working well. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Oh, and this case, again, obviously, you just um, drop the bottom in to hook it on, and then this one just latches in and if you're not sure how to open it you just push this button and it opens itself again then you can pull it back up and out all right that's it thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one